The first business course that I bought was a six figure agency course that was six years ago. Before that, I didn't really see the value in courses and I see people uh, talk about this quite a bit. It used to be very common where people just don't trust courses at all. And I was the same way. I didn't trust courses. I didn't trust the people selling them. I knew that all of the information could be found online, whether it be from YouTube videos or less expensive courses like on Udemy, but that never worked. I didn't see any results with it. And it's clear why it's because the information is so scattered. And even on social media platforms, I know this well, right? This is what I do is in order for me to grow, which is main priority, right? I don't want to be stuck at zero subscribers posting into the void, just hoping someone finds my hyper valuable content. You have people are playing the game of catching attention, delivering some form of value, whether it be uh, just educational, actionable advice or entertainment or a mix of both. But it's usually short, sweet and just focused on high performing topics and the topics like most of the topics inside of the six figure agency course that I took, if you would have put those online in a separate video without people showing intent by actually purchasing a course, it nobody would talk about it. It's just so fucking boring and nobody wants to actually sit down and listen to those things. And especially when there is not any money or pain on the line to actually implement the strategies that you are purchasing, it just doesn't make sense. There's a lot of psychology involved in purchasing a course, putting something on the line, actually forcing yourself to sit down with the boring strategies and implement them, right? Rather than just looking for some form of entertainment online and hoping that you can find the perfect balance of entertainment and value so that you can just endlessly consume content while doing nothing about your life. And don't act like you're immune to this. Nobody is immune to this. I'm not immune to this, right? I click on things mindlessly on my phone and end up watching for a minute before I realize like, what the fuck am I doing? Why am I actually watching this? I could be doing something better. And so when I was fed up with my multiple business attempts and just trying to learn online and learn the fundamentals and buy books and other things, I was fed up. Frankly, I, I didn't want anything to do with the space anymore, but I wanted to give myself one last try. So I researched the best or the latest and greatest business models to get into um, something that could take me to six figures in income, which at the time, like it's a good thing to aim for six figures at the start. Uh, but you soon realize that that is just the beginning of all of this. So I found a dude that had a good reputation. His name's Billy Wilson. If you want to go research him, I haven't looked at him very much in the past, but Billy Wilson, I paid 999 or 997 for his six figure agency course. And it was a great course. I learned a lot from it, but it was a huge chunk out of my finances. I was like at my final straw where I had tried so many different business models. This one had to work or else I go back to coding or getting a web design job. The, the entire story is a kind of like jumble of multiple business failures and then eventually getting a job and then eventually making one work. But this course was like me getting dead serious about making all of this stuff work. And so with that, with that pressure on the line and me about to drop out of school and deciding whether or not I should actually do the homework and at a part time job at the time, everything just added up to the point where once I saw that first bit of resistance from actually like reaching out to people, cold emailing them, getting on a call, actually trying to make the business work, it all made sense. But there was just so much pressure in my life that it, it all fell to pieces. I didn't get results and I ended up having to get a job because that was uh, it made the most sense at the time. And so this course, again, was great. It taught me about the applicability of copywriting, sales, marketing, funnels, paid ads, all of these things that I had been learning about, like compartmentalized through my YouTube research and on social media, this was all packaged up clean. Here's how it all works in the form of an agency business model. And so I went on to take this because now it makes sense for almost any business model. It's like, I need this piece. I need this piece. I need this piece. I need this, this piece. And if you want to understand those pieces, check out the one person business model playlist that I have and the $1 million skill stack where I go over like which skills you should learn in order to apply to almost every single business model. So there were three things that destroyed my chance at success here. And this is on top of the, the pressure in my life. The first was that I didn't give a flying fuck about running a Facebook ads agency. I didn't want to actually work on my business. Second thing is that cold emailing local businesses was time consuming, stressful, 
and none of them had the money to pay me. Now, of course, I could target uh, richer people or people that had more money, but eventually I found a solution to this after uh, <laughs> seeing some success with web design and cold email. This is why I always recommend starting a personal brand now. It's the future. If you're not already on the train, I don't know where you've been. I don't know what videos you've been watching, but personal brand, have leads come to you and have an authoritative profile so when you actually do cold dm people it is much better than a random email showing up in someone's inbox now i'm not saying it's bad all around it's a very good strategy i'm just saying for most people it makes a thousand percent sense to start delivering value via a personal brand if you're afraid to write content for free then you shouldn't even be thinking about working for a client your first client without much experience. It goes both ways. You have to start, you don't have to fake it till you make it, but you have to start posting and delivering value that you are learning and that you are going to help clients with anyways in exchange for a lot of money. It doesn't make sense why people don't start a personal brand. And the third thing was I was never confident in my niche and that led to an immense amount of friction and shiny object syndrome. So this whole Facebook ads agency, the, the journey along with it taught me a lot that a lot of things that I would use in my future business models and it identified a problem that would repeat time and time again when I started these businesses or when I had something going well, I would always come back and question what is my niche, right? Choosing a niche is the biggest problem ever in this creator economy. Everyone talks about it and uh, I mean, I work directly with people in modern mastery and digital economics. Uh, it's just a recurring issue time and time again. So it's been on my mind time and time again to try and deliver a solution, right? Because that's what you do as a creator is you take problems and you think about them. You contemplate, you research, you write your own stuff, you pull from your direct experience and my experience growing. And long story short, this is what I've found. But before we dive in, there is a new style of cohort that I'm running. Um, it starts on February 7th. I would recommend you check it out. Links in the description. In short, we're going to be creating your niche of one, and this is all as a personal brand, creating your niche of one, writing 20 plus foundational pieces of content. I'm going to be writing them with you on the screen. And we are going to outline a growth strategy for your social media. In, in reality, it's just networking, but how to network properly, build relationships, get new opportunities, whether it be a job opportunity, freelance clients, or just meeting great people that'll help you grow. All of that is 150, right? This isn't an expensive cohort like I've ran in the past where it's 999 or even 2000. It's 150, right? For all of that good stuff. So check it out. Hope you enjoy it. Hope I see you in there. Let's make this whole one person business thing simple. One, build for yourself. Two, write to yourself. Three, sell to yourself. There are millions of people with the same interests, problems, and desires as you, and you only need to find a fraction of them. The most profitable niche is you. So that Facebook ad agency that we talked about earlier wasn't my first business business attempt and it wasn't my last. So somewhere along this journey of mine, I stumbled or I started logging onto Twitter more and some guy, Jose Rosado, came across my page with like a self-improvement tweet, like a harsh truth. And I'm like, oh, Twitter isn't all memes and bullshit. I can actually find people giving out value on Twitter. And surprisingly, after I followed him and more people showed up on my feed, um, and I was exposed to this money Twitter, people were giving out incredible advice that I was just like taking left and right. And eventually it, it just made sense to start a personal brand on Twitter. And so that's what I started doing. But one thing made me stand out amongst all the others. That is, I didn't have a static niche. So before this, we're all over the place here, but before this I was doing web design and funnels for serv service businesses and then I pivoted that offer as marketing consulting for creators because that's who I wanted to work with at the time, right? Were the people that I was following, the people that I looked up to. It only made sense that I try and work with the people that inspire me, right? So reposition my offer to marketing consulting, which is pretty much the same thing where I'm helping them with web design, funnels, copywriting, all of the things that go into that for a service business. But I offered consulting rather than freelancing simply because I'm a creator and I knew they were a creator. And since they're a one person business, I understand that they want to do it on their own, right? That offer would be more profitable than me doing it for them because I would just be teaching them. But I, I didn't only talk about my marketing consulting, right? Or marketing or funnels or web design. I talked about whatever I wanted to 
in a way that was interesting to other people. In other words, I had to introduce them to the importance of the topic I wanted to talk about in order for them to understand. If I wanted to talk about emotional management, I would. If I wanted to talk about fitness and nutrition, I would. If I wanted to post an aspirational piece of content, I would. 80% of my content did not revolve around the thing that I was selling, and it didn't matter. Why would it? If I can be interested in both fitness and business, so can other people. Other people can have the exact same interests as me. And even if they don't have those interests, then I write a tweet where we're going to go about the, over this in two videos from now where I write content with you in the video. Self-awareness as a whole is like the biggest business hack, right? Because you have to think about how you would actually view content. Like, do you only follow business people? Do you only follow fitness people? It, it, it just doesn't make sense when you actually think about your own actions. If something shows up on my feed about fitness, I feel like anyone can become interested in fitness if it is the right tweet, right? That's the entire challenge is how do I introduce you to the importance of a topic like fitness? So I could say 10 reasons you need to get into the gym. That applies to anyone. And if the reasons are good, then it's shareable. People are going to follow you. And then if you want to talk about business and you go, Here's 10 reasons to start a one person business. It's the same thing, right? You have to start broad and beginner level. And then that's top of funnel, funnel social media. That's how you grow. And then once you get them into your newsletter or into your lead magnet or some other kind of funnel that educates them in alignment with the service that you have to offer, that's where the sales come from, right? Because you aren't and shouldn't be promoting in all of your content. It just doesn't make sense to do that. And if you can create a system that bakes in promotions, then you have much more free space in your mind to talk about whatever you want, right? So if I want to sell a product or service, here's exactly what I would do. First, talk about whatever I want in an interesting way that leads to growth. Two, craft a three week long strategy based on the topics in the product or service. This builds authority and it's what I'm doing right now with solopreneur sprints, right? Pay attention. Did I talk about business in the last letter or did I talk about whatever I wanted? The third is start beginner level for the sake of customer awareness and increase to advanced as it gets closer to launch, right? Long, medium and short form content from the top down, the promotions write themselves. And then the fifth, Systemize what worked and incorporate promotions throughout the week to keep sales high, like bi-weekly threads on a topic around you offer. So if I offer web design and let's say I talk about whatever I want, fitness, business, self-improvement, philosophy, anything throughout the week, every single Tuesday and Thursday, I write a web design and business specific thread, right? And at the at bottom of that thread, I have a promotion of my offer. I can, that's a system that I can milk endlessly. And if those threads are good and they tackle a common problem, they give value, like you understand persuasion, that's how you make sales. All right. So let's create your niche of one or the niche of you. Here's a graphic. You are the niche. Let's look at this because this is important. On the left, we have the start of a story and the highs, highs and lows associated with it. So people have the desire to change and that is around where your customer is right now. And then when you had the desire to change, you had to learn, educate yourself, acquire skills, and actually take action to gain experience that you can teach other people. And that entire journey represents your unique path in life that you, that's what content ideas are. And then upwards where it says you are here, you see how you're just a bit ahead of your potential customer or a follower. And then you are working towards your ideal future. And now your ideal future is not marketing, web design, or some hyper-specific niche, right? It is very big, broad. I'm sure it resembles the good life. And that is unique to every single individual. And how you are going to achieve that good life is unique to you. Are you going to study spirituality? Maybe you like philosophy more. What part of philosophy do you like? Stoicism? Uh, what are the other things? What kind of business model are you going to talk about, right? Is it going to be a creator business? Is it going to be a freelance agency, e-commerce? What's it going to fucking be next health? Everyone needs health, health, wealth relationships. So are you going to talk about health every now and then? Because in your future, your ideal future, you want to have high energy so that you can put effort into your business. So what are you doing health related to do that? And how can you incorporate that in your content to make you stand out from other people because you already have the systemized promotions in place to sell your offer and monetize? So from a spiritual or philosophical lens, your brand is yourself, right? It is a concept. And that brand 
can be an outcome of a repetitive business ideology that has been conditioned into your head. So if you've only been studying freelancing and haven't dug into like Facebook ads agency, for example, and brought in your perspective to collect that collect aspects of that perspective and bring it into your worldview, then you're going to, it's going to end in a lot of pain and suffering because you're going to think your business model is the best, just like religions do, or even sports teams do. And you need to take a step back, zoom out and create your brand as something unique, as something that is you without attaching to any specific ideology and instead creating a holistic philosophy for your own brand. So let's walk through how to recreate yourself as a brand. First is map your ideal future. How is your story going to end? Will it result in peace, health, and fulfilling work? Or do you have no idea how it's gonna end up? Your story is what separates your personal brand apart because every single person's story is niche, individual, and unique. And if you don't have a vision for the future, one, watch the Society is a Pyramid Scheme video? I believe so. But if you don't have a vision for your future, how are you going to educate and execute in a conducive manner towards that vision? How are you going to take directional action in order to gain experience in life and pass that experience down? Second is intelligent imitation. When you take stuff from one writer, it's plagiarism, but when you take from many writers, it's called research. That is a well-known quote from Wilson Misner, but it's the whole steal like an artist thing. So my voice or tone or message is a combination of the voice, tone, or message that I like from other people, right? I read books and I figure out, hmm, I like how this guy said this one thing. I'm going to take that or at least take note of it and then practice it later. Or, hmm, I like how this guy talks about flow. I want to talk about that too. Or it, like on the flip side too, we've talked about anti-vision and vision before and having like a good and bad thing to observe and allow you to choose or make the right decision accordingly. But if I see something that I don't like where it's like, I don't like how this guy's writing. It sounds too like airy fairy. I get that from the power of now. I love that book, but I want to be able to dos distill those concepts to the people that don't really resonate with the way that he's saying it, right? I need to come at it a different way in order to attract a new audience to that very life-changing message. And so the same, it's the same with everything. It's not only my voice, but my brand. What colors do I like? Uh, what are like minor button details on my website? Like the rounded edges, it's everything. That's what creativity is. It's either taking one thing like an idea and then deconstructing it into parts and then reconstructing it like mental Legos, or it's taking those parts from other people and then reconstructing them into your own. So this works for anything, but here's what you're gonna do. Write down the books that impacted you the most. Write down the creators, authors, or public figures whose style you love the most. Immerse yourself in their work to condition your mind to think in that style. Write down their tone, voice, and what makes them great. Research their products, landing pages, and every detail about how they make an income. In short, create a tribe of mentors and exclusively consume their content. You won't have to copy them directly if you're so immersed in their work that your subconscious bursts original ideas for you from those things, right? You'll notice that you naturally start to talk in that way. So the third thing is book to brand content. The path of the problem solver or value creator is how you escape the world of replaceability. Fall in love with the challenge that problems present from superficial to metaphysical and your ideal future will create itself. This is the infinite game. So every story has an ideal outcome or a goal. And then on the path to that goal, goal there are a series of highs, lows, emotions, battles, mistakes, and solutions to the problems that you find al along the way to be systemized. So here's how you turn your brand or yourself into a niche that houses your content products or services. Treat your ideal future as the end goal of the story. Make note of your past. There are a select few pivotal moments that can be your starting point of the book. Write down an outline of the book. What are the chapters that must be included to reach the end goal? Outline key points for each of those chapters. Seriously, do this. This is book to brand. You take a book, you map the ideal outcome of your future, right? That's the end goal. Point A is where you are now or one of those pivotal points in your life that made you want to change. And then in between those are chapters and sub chapters. And those act 
as your content ideas, right? And then you fill them in by writing newsletters, condense those into threads, condense the threads into posts like tweets, Instagram, reels, TikToks, whatever it may be. And then over time, let's say you wanna write a book like I am, this is exactly what I'm doing for my content. And this won't be immediate. You're not just gonna write out the chapters all at once. You're gonna write down two or three, but then you have some form of an outline and then you have something that will allow new ideas and experiences to register in your awareness and you'll be able to connect it to that outline and come back and start filling it in as you experience life, read books, read content from your tribe of mentors that you created, et cetera, et cetera. So number four is to write your story. So your story is what makes you unique and relatable. And if you've been paying attention, you can see at the very start of this video, I started with a personal experience around a topic that I wanted to talk about in order to frame the situation, my six figure ads agency course that I bought. I'm sure that was quite relatable with a lot of you because the, the, the story and the relatable aspects of a story give people hope and makes them aware of the possibility that it is possible to overcome the low point in life that they're in or to take advantage and double down on the high point. So we, we just talked about this, but for the sake of repetition, because it's important, write the sections of each chapter as an article or newsletter, repurpose that writing into a podcast or YouTube video, condense the main points into a thread, carousel, or LinkedIn post, rewrite those main points as engaging tweets, turn those tweets into real scripts and posts for other platforms. This process gives you a multi-dimensional understanding of the topic that you are writing about, right? Because a tweet is a big idea. It's not super actionable, it can be, but an article, you're fleshing out so much more, you're connecting different ideas. And as you do this, you're, it, this will change your life over six months, right? I have so many fucking reasons to tell you guys to start a personal brand and that's all my videos are is like hey here's all the reasons start one already because i genuinely i genuinely don't think that a creator is a business model it's a life philosophy right just applied to the internet and another thing is that if you remember the best ways to learn from my video learn new skills fast teaching is one of them right everyone's afraid to teach when teaching is how you learn you don't have to lie you just be honest like hey I learned this today. How interesting is this? Or if you do something like, why should you start a one person business? Just give off your honest experience in a bullet point list. It's like no one's stopping you, but yourself from writing and producing some form of value in the world. So number five is when in doubt, zoom out two steps to happiness, zoom in on what's important, zoom out from everything else. The solution to struggle is perspective. This journey is difficult. You will struggle to articulate your niche because nobody wants to put themselves in a box. And so for now, I'm just putting it on your radar that you can completely, you can completely forget the traditional niche down advice of choosing like the most profitable market with someone that you don't want to work with in any capacity, using a skill that you don't want to use in any capacity. You can create your own niche. And if this is a problem, like if you can't fully understand this yet, that's a good thing. So what I would recommend you do, because the reason it's not making sense to you and you lack understanding is because you, let's say there's a dot here and there's a dot here and you're missing the dot here that allows those to connect and give you that aha moment in your mind, right? So you lack experience. So what you need to do is start anyway, immerse yourself in information that has the potential to solve that problem. Read books, buy courses, buy listen to podcasts, just immerse yourself in the information, drown yourself in the information to the point where when you fuck off and do nothing or you zoom out or you go on a walk, then ideas won't stop coming to your brain and things will start to make sense because your subconscious mind is working to solve that problem. So that is it for this video. The most profitable niche is you. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, leave a comment with your favorite part or any insights that this gave you. Be sure to subscribe as well. And then again, just a reminder, Solopreneur Sprints, a new affordable $150 cohort uh, to build the base of your one person business in 14 days. We go over, uh, we write 20 plus foundational pieces of content. We create your niche of one and we give a growth strategy and how to repurpose content and everything you need. Check out the landing page. Uh, it's only open for enrollment until February 7th. After that, you would have to join digital economics. The master's tier gives you access to all solopreneur sprints that are ever going to happen ever. So check those out. Links in the description starts February 7th, February 7th. So we've got some time, but not much. 
hope to see you in there. Hope you enjoyed the video. Once again, have an incredible rest of your day. Peace.